Okay, so I just wanted to add a little bit more to the video that I did um, yesterday, I think it was, um, just about the twist shifter, because you didn't get to see that yesterday. So this is the twist shifter. Um, they do a few different speeds, I think 6, 9, 12 and 18. This is the 18 um, speed gearbox. And as you can see, whichever gear I'm in, that's the gear I'm in. And I don't need to pedal to get it into gear. And that was um, invaluable when I was um, doing this loop. And you, you, you know, if you think about your riding style and how you get through things, you don't ever think you will be in this scenario. And I never thought that I would be in this scenario as well. You know, I've ride, ridden bikes all my life. Um, but imagine I was bouncing through some rock gardens in maybe gear six, five or six. And at the end of that rock garden, there was um, a big bog that you'd fall into and, you know, a quarter of your tire would be up in mud and you need to be in first gear straight away. I just used to twist it like that and I could ride through it where everyone else would be stalling and they'd have to push through that little bit or lift the bike up, get it in gear. Um, I can't really replicate this situation in this environment here. Um, but I can sort of like show you what I mean by going up this hill. So I can't really replicate this situation in, in this environment here, but um, I can sort of like show you what I mean about the gearbox. So I'm in first. I don't need to pedal to change gear. Now I'm in five. Now I'm in one. It's just that quick shifting that transforms your you're riding because you can just uh, twist to, into any gear that you want to be in. And people say these, you know, they, they, they don't like the idea of the gearbox and the twist shifter because they say it's slow somehow. I don't, I don't understand that. Um, when trigger shifting, you have to go through each gear one by one. So another thing people say is you can't pedal under load. I'm pedaling, pedaling, pedaling. Even on the uphills, I'm still pedaling and I'm still twisting gears. I'm just letting off ever so slightly, just like you would with any system whatsoever. I will show you again. I'm sure these people are just there to changing gear look and I'm still pedaling. I'm just ever so slightly letting the letting the pressure off. Yep, you do have to let the pressure off, but it's not a case of stop pedaling at all. It's just a case of lightly lifting that pressure off, changing gear, just like you have to do with any other system. If you um, change gear under power with a chain yes you can do it but eventually you're gonna snap that chain that happened several times on the Cairngorm loop that I've just done with my pals they snapped quite a few chains because they had were in a position where they had to change gear under power the chain went now I will say there are the only negative things I can find there are two two negative things with this system. The first one, a lot of people think you're riding an electric bike. Now, I don't have any issues with electric bikes, as you might seen in some of my other videos. I have um, not experimented with them, but just wanted to be curious. So I've done some videos on, on those. And um, the, I just don't like thinking that I'm on an electric bike when I'm not, when I'm struggling up a hill and I'm giving it all the, all the um, effort I can and people are wondering, he must be really unfit if he's putting that much effort in. Um, so that's another, that's, that's the only thing, but I've got my head around that now. You know, it's just living in England and we have um, all this high marketing that are, are just pushing derailers all the time. Uh, in Europe, these are, are massive, so it's not an issue over there, I suppose. And then the second thing is that you've got to get your head around is if you're going out riding with your friends, you're gonna to have to download a meditating app because while they're fixing their bikes all the time, you're gonna get wound up and you'll need to just sit in a corner and chill until they fix their bikes so you can continue. Um, so that's the two things.
Um, so uh, last week I just had my um, yearly email from P P uh, Pinion just um, reminding me to do the oil change and um, how many of you get an email from Shimano or SRAM reminding you to clean your chain every day um, and oil your chain every day. Uh, so that's just a simple procedure and I'm going to um, video that uh, and put that in a separate video when that happens. One thing that I did want to talk to you about though is belt maintenance. Here I have a belt and it's perfectly rolled up and this is how you tran should transport it whenever you're traveling. It unravels just like that and to actually um, fold it back up you do a twist and if you feel any resistance then you should stop but it should just roll up just like that and unravel just like that. Now these belts they have carbon fibers going through them in this direction which makes them really strong in that in that force when the force is put against its length like that. But just like a chain if you were to put force in this direction here you're going to break these fibers and then you're going to weaken the belt and you don't want to do that. And um, that's why when you're putting it on the bike, you don't prise it on. When it's off the bike, you don't twist it in any other direction. You don't squash it down flat because again, it's gonna break those, those fibers there. So you just need a lot of care when it's um, off, off the bike. And so easy to fold up. They're so light, really, um, really light. And, you know, really easy to transport. Now I um, put them in a, just a padded envelope when I'm traveling and I make sure that this is at the at the back of a, a pannier or at the bottom of a bag so it can't get twisted in any way. Um, what I am trying to do is find a suitable uh, container for these. Now I'm surprised that gates haven't melt made a beautifully branded aluminium screw case to put these in for when you transport for when you're traveling you can just throw them in your bag anywhere so if you're into manufacturing this could be an opportunity for you to make an actually uh, a case for these because people are traveling around the world and we need uh, things to put our belts in so there gates please make one and um, i'll definitely buy it if you make it the chances of needing to replace a belt on a trip are slim you know well it depends on how long your trip is if you're doing a 50,000 mile trip around the world then you're going to need to carry a spare one but I always just carry a spare one anyway. Um, I think about 20,000 miles is the um, average lifespan of a belt. People have done a hell of a lot more um, but um, just like you would with a chain just you need to always make sure you can get yourself out of any sort of situation so if um, one would have to snap accidentally then yeah just um, just make sure you've got one but the chances you know these are lasting thousands of miles thousands of miles so um, absolutely amazing so this is just a close-up of the uh, of the belt here this number here tells you how many teeth it's got so this is a 115 T belt and um, like I said it's, it's got these grooves going this way but the actual carbon fibers the strength bits are, are running in that direction there this one is the center track belt, so it has this groove in the in the middle here that joins up with the with the cog. And I actually have a cog here, so I can show you that as well. Look how beautifully machined these are. So please, gates, make a nice case for the belt. That would be lovely. Um, and they just join up in there. And it keeps it perfectly in track. So whenever you, um, if you do need to replace the cogs, um, again, something you'll have to do rarely, um, then you will need, to, if you were removing a cassette, you need a chain whip, or you need something similar for a, for a belt, um, for the belt cogs, and that's what you can get from Gates. They're not expensive, and again, it would just go around with the wheel off, obviously, and the belt off, goes around the cog holds it in place and then you have the tool just to um, just to take that cog off there 
uh, just the same tool that you use for cassettes. Now obviously if you are removing this, um, this cog, you might be looking and thinking, well rather than investing in one of these, I could just use the actual belt to hold it steady. And um, you could use your old belt if you are replacing a belt, that would be fine, but don't think about using a new belt as um, a chain whip because that's where you're gonna, you're gonna crimp it together and, and damage your belt. So if you're gonna use an old one, that could work, but um, definitely don't use a new belt uh, to use as a, as, a, as a belt whip. And I forgot to add, tomorrow I'm recording the review of the Scrambler. I was meant to do that today, but we've run out of time.